when I you mean, look for equality of outcome. Well, it, it is how it played out in the Soviet Union. We don't know how many people died. The, the, the reasonable estimates look like about 25 million. That's dead. That's not just, that's not imprisoned. That isn't families destroyed. That's just dead. And in, Ma, in Maoist China, it might have approximated 100 million. That's just internal repression. And so what, what seems to happen as soon as you decide that the hierarchy is unfair because there are oppressors and oppressed, then you can go after the oppressors with moral virtue. But the problem is, is that you, there's almost no limit to the number of ways that you can categorize someone as an oppressor. The, the category just starts to expand. Like the communists killed all the socialists. They killed all the religious people. They killed most of the students. They killed all the productive farmers. And they killed the productive farmers because they owned land, you know, and maybe a little house and a few cows, you know. I mean, to be a successful farmer in Russia at the, at the turn of the 20th century didn't mean you were rich, right? It just meant you weren't starving. It's like they killed all those people because they were oppressors, because they had more than someone else. That's how they defined it in order to get the people to rally against it. Yes. Yes, it's a, yes, and, it, and, the, and the definition kept slipping because, well, look, look, even now, it's like, well, let's say we rally against the 1%, you know, and, and those would be the money owners, let's say. It's like, okay, who's in that group? Well, everybody in North America is in that group. Worldwide, yeah. Well, but who, who but sets you, the parameters, right? right? Well, it's it's 34, like, it's thirty-four thousand dollars a year sets you in the one percent worldwide. Right, right. So, so does that make all of us oppressors? Ba basically, everybody who lives above poverty in America is in the one percent of the world. Right, right. And also by historical standards. Yeah. And so the problem is the problem with the oppressor oppressed narrative is that you can multiply the oppressors endlessly, and there's no end to going after them. Right. And you, as soon as you make a definition, you can move the boundaries and then the next person is the oppressor mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. keep going. Mm -hmm. Well, and you also see the interesting thing too is that, and this is complicated, so I've been thinking about this proclivity of the left to, to destroy members of the moderate left. It's like there's the game, part of the game is that's being played as far as I can tell, the ideologically pathological game is I'm more virtuous than you. Now, look, if, if you're on the, on the radical left, and you say, well, you're more virtuous than a right-winger, it's like, well, who cares? That's obvious, because the right-wingers are, 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 you know, pathological. So being more virtuous than them, that's not much of an attainment. But if I have my moderate leftist compatriot standing right beside me, and he's pretty damn virtuous, but I'm even more virtuous than him, then that's a real, that's a real uh, attainment on my part. It's a moral attainment with no effort on my part. If I can figure out some way of classifying that previously virtuous person as an oppressor along some dimension, then all of a sudden I get an increment in my moral virtue. And that happened all the time in these leftist revolutions run amok. That was just a constant feature. So it's not good. It's not good.